everyone, VGT Adam here. I uh, just got finished watching the anime Yasuke, and I have some thoughts on it. But uh, before that, I want to give a little, I guess, um, my experience with no knowledge about Yasuke, I suppose. Um, so, I was first privy to Yasuke from the game Neo, because, you know, I'm that kind of person. Um where I learned that Yasuke was actually the first foreign samurai that we know of, not William Adams, even though William Adams is kind of like, I guess, quote-unquote, the most well-known one, I suppose. I mean, they made a game based off him, uh, which was originally supposed to be a movie. But yeah, so it wasn't William Adams, even though William Adams was important, it was this black samurai, or I guess in the case of Neo, Obsidian Samurai, which does sound cooler, let's be honest. Um... Yasuke, and I just thought that was really interesting that the very first foreign samurai, you know, was Yasuke, and unfortunately the games, neither Nier 1 or Nier 2, didn't really delve too deep into him, other than he was, you know, a foreign samurai and uh, close to Nobunaga, didn't really get too much more into him, um... But then I heard that there was an anime uh, about Yasuke being announced. I thought, oh, cool, this would be a nice uh, stylized way to us for, for people to learn Yasuke and, like, his role in ancient Japan um, and, you know, what he did. I mean, he wasn't, like, a hugely influential person for the entire world, but, like, you know, the fact that he was the first, Western sam first foreign samurai and that he was black is kind of a big deal. So, you know, it would be nice to learn about him. Um... And then the first trailer dropped, and it was a little more supernatural than I thought it'd be. I didn't really expect that. I I thought it would probably be like more like Roni Kenshin, where like it's based off history, but maybe it takes some liberties to be a little more like stylized, so it still like be the the history that we know of, but maybe you know a little more over top action that we're used to or like you know over dramatization or stuff like that that'd be more like that which still is in here because it's anime so it's always going to be in here but it was a little more like oh people just have powers too all right well this is not this is not what i was expecting but it wasn't a deal breaker i'm like okay you know what that's fine that's fine um uh and i decided to do a little more research on yasuke not too much is known about him honestly like most of the stuff we do know from popular culture is kind of like it there's some like other stuff here and there but like not too much record records of him was were uh, ever made or at least if they were they're lost of time um but i mean the anime does kind of cover the most well-known stuff i suppose for the most part um but yeah so then it's, it's actually it's actually a really short anime it's only six episodes and it surprisingly is fine being six episodes um it, it feels it feels complete like you think oh six episodes that's really short no it feels like a full story it feels complete it doesn't feel like like um some of the other anime where they're like on netflix are like eight episodes or 13 episodes and still feel like they're missing a lot of sh content like uh dragon's dogma obviously like i talked about and like a few years ago dead man cry baby that was like 10 episodes and still felt like it was missing stuff this one feels complete for the most part um, I didn't really have too many problems with it, um, but I was in for a shock when, you know, f the very first bit of the first episode was, yeah, okay, people have superpowers and some psychic powers, whatever. Oh, giant robots! This is what we're doing. Okay, so, like, again, not a deal breaker for me, but I was kind of disappointed. I did want some kind of more of a historical anime, but this full-on historical fantasy, fine fine historical science fiction whatever you want to call it it's fine let me just watch the show the way it was intended to be as this fictionalized version it's extremely fictionalized version of uh actual historical character's life that's fine i would have preferred something different but it's fine um there's not too much to talk about when it comes to plot or characters because it's so rudimentary like the plot is just this um, exiled, I guess, in terms of first episode, Ronin. This exiled black Ronin is kind of just living his own life and then gets intertwined into having to protect this little girl and, you know, has to end up saving all of Japan because of it and, you know, the villains are kind of... 
well, the, the the main villains are kind of one note. We have some side characters that have a little more person, personality to them, and they're a little more slightly more complex. But like, there's not much to go over in terms of like story or characters or stuff like that because they're so basic. Like Yasuke doesn't really have an arc; it's just he's reluctant, then goes on it. I guess I guess he does learn to accept his past and move on from it. I suppose that is something that I think about it because I just finished the show, so I'm still trying to process it. Um. I suppose that's something, but like no one goes through any kind of major arcs or development. It's kind of like how they start, how they end. Yasuke does have you know a little bit, but he's more or less still the same character by the end, just maybe a little more. No, he's he's mostly the same character. It's just like you know he's a little less reluctant, a little more gung ho, and then um forgives himself. But he's still like the same Yasuke. He didn't go through like an epiphany or anything like that. I'm not saying like people just go from like one personality to another. I'm not saying that, but like you know. A little more development would be nice. The side characters with the, the mercenaries and everything, they had some personality. And the fact that they were mercenaries meant they weren't fully evil, I suppose. Um, and one of them's a robot. One of them is a Russian that can turn to a bear. It's weird, but it's, it's, it's entertaining. Um, but yeah, when I, turn, I can't really like dig deep into like the story or the characters. Like Say like when I did the Deadman Crybaby one, I didn't know too much about Devilman. I went into that, then I did research after it. Um... And it was interesting to see, like, the differences and the similarities, and I still had my own thoughts on the show. And then Dragon's Dogma, I could compare it to the game, because I love that game, and then the, sh- the show didn't live up to that, because it did its own thing and did it poorly. But here it's like, since, um, in real history, because I try to make sure to at least do a little research after I watch the show, just to make sure I know what I'm talking about, um... In real history, after Nobunaga's death, um, Yasuke was captured by the... Oh, God. Was it Je- Jesuits? Jesuits? I don't know how to pronounce that. But he was captured. And then I believe he was released to... I want to say Europeans. I should have just left the freaking article open. Whatever. I, I'm just going to record. I don't care. Uh, he was released, I believe. And then not really any information after what happened. We don't really have any information. But this anime, while it does have flashbacks of his time in Nobunaga's um, service, it doesn't, it's not fully, oh, excuse me, it's not fully on that, and it's more like his life after he exiled himself, so that's how he knows it's going to be like its own thing, because we have, we have no records about, not many records about what happened after his capture, and this show is about him being in exile, and it does mention in the show that the same events happened, except the difference that he escaped himself as opposed to being let go. Um, where was I going with this? Uh, shit. <laughs> oh, this is why I always write stuff down. I should at least did notes, but I don't let whatever. I don't care. Um, so yeah, anyway. Yeah, I remember. Okay, so the show is mostly about his life after that. And the fact he's a this little girl that has, like, psychic abilities and stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's going to be an original story. And for what it is, I would say it's entertaining. It is entertaining. I would never say it's bad. It's not bad. And I'll get some of the other aspects of the show I like besides story and characters, which, like I mentioned, was kind of lacking. But there are other aspects that are good, and I'll get to it in a bit. Um, I will not say the show is bad. It's not bad by any margin at all. It's I would say it's a good show. I don't know if I process it enough to say if it's, like, really great or, like, fantastic or anything. But I will say it's entertaining. It is entertaining. So, I would say, like, you know, it's short, six episodes, to so give it a watch. But it's entertaining. I would say it is good. Um, but, yeah, like, it's kind of just... He reluctantly takes the girl. Then the girl's mother, or I think it's mother, not caretaker. Well, both, duh. Mother and caretaker, whatever dies um in that attempt so he goes back and then he eventually um gets captured by the mercenaries and the uh it's weird it's like this two that's one thing i know it's like you know six episodes there's like two arcs it's really weird like imagine like your normal typical uh anime and like how and they might have multiple arcs in one season or just like um, if it's a continuous show, like, maybe, you know, they have the arcs and whatever, but they usually take episodes upon episodes upon episodes, so this feels like se- first three episodes are season one, and second three episodes are season two, it kind of feels like that, like, two completely different arcs just 
mashed together like that, it's a little weird. Like, there's still connecting elements, obviously, like, the recurring characters and stuff like that. But, like, once the villain of the first three episodes is defeated, like, the barely mentioned villain for the next three episodes is the main villain. Like, it's a little weird like that. But, yeah, so the, the first main villain is, like, this uh, European priest that, like, wants her power. And then when that fails and he dies, um, the da- daimyo of, I guess, Japan, who's evil in this show now, which is weird, and female. And to my knowledge, I don't know if there were any female daimyo back then. I could be wrong. I didn't look into that. But, like, yeah, then she wants her power. And it's just this whole thing where the girl is a key and Yasuke is kind of just like her protector kind of thing. Even though she shows named after him, it's kind of more about the girl. Uh, Saki, I think her name was. Um... But yeah, it's, it's it's just like that's the whole thing that you know tries to take her. It fails. He gets captured. They try to get her powers. They fail. Um, mercenaries leave. Then the new villain comes in. Uh, same deal. They want her powers. The only difference is that the violence escalates. The mercenaries come back. I don't want to spoil too much, even though I kind of just spoil a shit ton. Whatever. I'm not going into the really huge detail spoilers, so I'm not gonna. Don't worry. Uh, not that like it really matters, though, because a lot of the characters still are kind of bland, so it's not really too much to spoil other than, hey, the good guys win. Um, there is, I'm not going to say what it is, there is one certain aspect of drawing a character's death in the last episode that I didn't like. I think it would have been more impactful if they stayed dead, but then they couldn't complete their arc, I guess. If you watch the show, you know what I mean, and hope, I don't know if you'll agree with me or disagree with me. I feel like it would be more impactful if they die, but they didn't. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, like the overall story is kind of like just basic. It's kind of like the same two plots happening, but with different characters, kind of thing. Um, and like, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like the, I feel like his time with Nobunaga would be more interesting. Well, I, I could understand you can do a lot more creative stuff with the fact that, like, we don't know what happened after he was released from captivity, after Nobunaga's death, you can do more creative freedom with that, I understand that gives you more leeway to do whatever you want those flashbacks with Nobunaga and just all that stuff I know from Neo is just, like, a little more interesting to me like, I was, like, I'm always a, a big history guy, I just like history, I just find it fascinating even America's boring history still has fascinating moments in them that's not an anti-American statement I always say it's boring because of how recent in comparison to the rest of the history, like, America's history America directly, history goes back to the 1700s, where history of other places goes back to, like, B.C. Like, sure, we have cavemen and stuff, but they weren't, like, only on America. They were in other places. Like, the America that we know today was 1700s, so it's a lot more recent in comparison. So it's just interesting to know, like, other countries' histories and stuff. And, yes, America does have some um, interesting things about it. But because it's one of the things where you probably live there. Like, I'm pretty sure Japanese people maybe might, might might not find Japanese history too interesting. Maybe French people don't find French history too interesting. Maybe it's one of those things where they'll find other countries' history more interesting kind of thing. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now. But, like, I just, in general, I always find history so interesting. So when I see, like, certain interpretations or takes on it that are still somewhat accurate, I just really like that. Like, um, Ghost of Tsushima. There's a pr- fantastic example. It's based off a real event, um, a real thing that happened, which they actually do mention Tsushima in here really quick. Um, but they instead of instead of the Mongols bring powder kegs, they bring robots. Now in real history, I can understand maybe there's a way around like powder guns and everything like that, and, like explosions, a way around that. How do you have swords win against giant robots? Just putting that out there. Anyway, I, <laughs> um. So that's an interesting game because it takes a real historical event and kind of like fictionalizes it, but it encourages you to look up really what happened, and even stuff in game isn't totally inaccurate. So it's just stuff like that, which is interesting to see these fictional takes on historic events, or even Neo, where yes, you have demons and you have super ma- superpowers and stuff like that, supernatural powers, but it's still like actual historical stuff, and it's just interesting to see how they uh, interpret that. In a weird way, also with, like, Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors. Like, I know it's actually... The new Samurai Warriors is going to have Yasuke in it, isn't it? Anyway. Uh, I have thoughts about a lot of shit. So, like, even then, like, interesting ways to see how they interpret Chinese history as fucking loose as that is. And then Samurai Warriors have it interpret Japanese history. That kind of stuff. It's just interesting to me. So, I would have liked it more 
if we saw more of his time with Nobunaga, as opposed to just having some flashbacks. But, whatever. Like I said, it frees up the show to be creative. Whatever. My personal thing is because I like history and like to see it the way it is. I like history. I like to see um interpretations of it. I would like that more, but whatever. So, um, especially with this, or like with the history is already so screwed up when you have giant robots already and shape shifting Russians with like modern clothing, kind of like it's shooting the leather. Leather. I don't think many places had leather like that back then, and shamans and stuff like that. Like, it's already the history's kind of fucked up. So it's like I guess it would have been still kind of weird, but whatever. Um, but well, we'll get into the like the actual full stuff I liked. I believe the, because I watched it in English dub, if you disagree with me with that, go listen to my Dubman Crybaby uh, um, thoughts on, where I quickly mentioned that, where I just prefer dubs. I'm not against subs, I just prefer dubs. Go listen to that, I don't want to get into this whole spiel. Um, But I watched it in dub, and I believe, I could be wrong, I believe it was actually written and recorded in English before any other language. Obviously it was still anime in Japan. Mappa Studios, um, they still, you know, have the normal lip flaps, it's not, like, lip synced fully to, like, English, or, like, like, when you watch cartoons, like, you can see their mouths form around the words, whereas, like, Japan, they might sometimes have, like, Akira, movie Akira, like, that's, the lips are animated around the Japanese language, where, like, we have Western cartoons that are animated around the, um, English language, but for the most part, anime is just an open flaps, making it easier for, like, any language to just kind of put in as long as it fits within the flaps. The show still does that, even though it's in the... Even though the recording was English first, it still has the general flaps. It's not, like, lip sync to... Um, it's not, like, forming around the English language. It's still just a generalized flaps. But I will say that the the, the, the um, voice acting was good, uh, I guess, because it was written in English first and anime around that. From I think it was anime around that. It could have still been... They had to time the lip flaps. I'm not sure. But the fact that it was in English first and voice in English first, the, the voice acting is good. But I will say, sometimes the animators, like, over-animate and it makes the voice acting seem bad. Like, say if someone is, like, worried about someone has, like, a worry tone of voice, but, like, it's not, like, raised too high, the animation will make it seem like he's supposed to be, like, yelling this, but then vo- normal voice actor is just, like slightly above normal tone but still sounding worried it makes it sound like the dub is bad because of how overly animated the expression would be um i didn't notice that but it is a good dub it is good there might be a couple of times where maybe like a character should have yelled a little better but like once again the animation makes it seem like more exaggerated than it is um actually, i actually want to get into that the art style i loved i just think that the art the art style itself was great um it's nothing, like, too out there, like, too, like, crazy or or stylized. It's fairly, you know, normal, like, what you expect anime to look like for the most part. But it's just, like, it was still just well done. Um, and then the animation. I know MAPPA has some problems when it comes to their how they handle their studio and how they treat their animators and stuff like that and their scheduling and stuff like that i know there's some problems i do know that but i will give credit where credit's due the animation in this is really really good there were not too many awkward shots or i didn't find anything too off model or like um off model isn't a problem it's just like you can sometimes do off model but it still look cool it's just the case when it's off model like there's a glaring problem like compare off model, like compare episode five of Dragon Ball Super, that off model, compared to say Dragon Ball Super Broly, where majority of those fight scenes are off model, like they're not on the character sheets, they're not modeled after the character sheets. Like um, the fight against Goku and Broly in that movie is very close to the the character sheets, but then the fight against Vegeta and Broly and Gogeta and Broly are not. Like it's still in the same art style, but it is not fun. The character sheets. Those kind of off-model things I'm fine with because they still look good. So, like, the off-model in the Broly movie is fine because it still looks good and you have the off-model in the Dragon Ball Super Episode Five stuff, which just looks bad. I don't have a problem with off-model because it looks good, but this show is just fully on-model. Everything followed the character sheets, to my knowledge, so it still all, all looked great. And the animation was really good because of that. Um, nothing looked bad. It was all clean and it was all animated really well. And the CG was 
very good. Like, people still have problems with CG and anime, and honestly, they still have problems. Like, while they are getting better with stuff like Beastars, and say what you will, this is true, Attack on Titan Final Season is good CG, I don't care what you say. Uh, but, like, Beastars and stuff like that. Um, but we're not there yet, because there was also X-Arm. So we're not there just yet. But the CG was really good. There were times where I couldn't even tell if it was CG or not. Like, there's some stuff that's obvious. But some stuff was like, is that 2D? Or, no, that's 3D. That's 3D, huh? And then the ones, the rare times where it is bad CG, they at least cover it with, like, dust or something so you can't tell. So it still works. So what I would say I would like about the show is the, the dub is, the voice acting, the dub, all that stuff is really good. The art style, kind of generic, but still good. The animation is superb. Uh, the fight scenes, the fight scenes are also pretty good. They're not, they don't last too long, which is fine. But they're they're pretty good, honestly. I don't like them, the magic or psychic fights. I just never like those in general. They're always so boring to me. But hey, they save on animation time and money, I suppose. Um, but yeah, like they're never usually creative. It's one of the reasons I don't like Harry Potter too much, because um, like the magic fights just bore me. And here, like the fight scenes in every fight scene don't last too long, so it wasn't too much a problem here. But those fight scenes I couldn't care less about. But yeah, it was still still a um. A fun show. Um, like I said, I'm still trying to process it. So I would say it's good and entertaining, but I don't know how other people feel. I don't know if I'll feel different at a certain point. Right now, I do think it's good. I just, I just personally wish it took more... It was more in Yasuke's time serving under Nobunaga as opposed to his time afterwards. I don't know. I feel like you had the interesting story right there, and then like you just did a different one. Which is still a cool story, I suppose, but, like, so basic and generic. Just save the world normal stuff. I'm not saying generic can be bad, it's just sometimes generic's boring. So, I don't have too many thoughts on this. Like, sure, I'm running over, like, 20 minutes, I think, at this point. But, like, I don't have too many thoughts on this compared to, like, some other ones where I can just go episode by episode and, like, or, like, moment by moment and talk about it. This one's kind of basic. And, like, the good stuff is just, like... Stuff people wouldn't notice that they're just watching casually, like the voice acting, the animation, the art style, all that stuff. Oh, the music! I can't mention that. The music's the music's okay. Um, it's very Samurai Shampoo, Afro Samurai, which is you know kind of a given. I think it's fine. Nothing really stood out to me. Um, it's good. It's the music's alright. Um, yeah, but that's that's kind of what it, it, all I have right now. Like I wish I had more stuff to talk about. But, like, there's really not too much to talk about. It's just kind of... It is just basic. But it's still it's still entertaining. It's still it's still cool. But it's just basic. So... I feel like I talked more about other anime and video games regarding similar things to this than the actual show. But when there's six episodes and not too much happens, that's, what, that's how it goes. Like... I didn't. I would not want this to be longer. That would feel like it's stretching out. Like I said, it feels like a complete story. You know, it's like two. It feels like two arcs meshed together. It still feels like a complete story. So I would not want to stretch it out. This is one of those times where six episodes is completely fine. Completely fine. But I don't know if there's any way for them to do a season two, or or I don't know. I don't know if there's just some way to have something similar to this, but like with a more interesting story. I'd like to talk about that. But it's it's good. That's all I'll say. It's good. Judge the show for yourself if you want to watch it. It's fine. Um, I don't know how well it's going to do because it just came out um, from when I'm recording. What's today? Today is Saturday from when I'm recording. So it came out Thursday, a couple days ago. So I don't know what the general consensus is. We'll see. These are my always jumbled thoughts. Like, oh, like every time I do a thoughts on it, it's always so jumbled and everywhere. And I'm so bad at this. But... Yeah, I did like it. It was good. I don't know if it was fantastic. I don't know how I'll feel later about this. But I think it's an entertaining show. I just wish it kind of focused more on Yasuke's time with Nobunaga as opposed to his time afterwards. But that's that's my thoughts on. So if there's anything anyone wants to discuss in the comments about the my terrible way of... Providing information about something or just some interesting stuff they found about the show. They're positive, they're negatives, whatever. We can talk about it in the comments if anyone's even listening. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on the Yasuke anime. Give it a shot. Um, see how you feel about it. This was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
I'm so bad at I'm always so bad at this. <laughs>